So how did I buy a 2015 Stage 2 GTR for zero dollars? Ah, I have rich parents, right? My parents bought it for me and that's how I got it for free. No, I'm young, I'm fast, I must have stolen it, right? No. Alright, 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 I, I got it, I got it. Uh, so there's a seller and then there is a potential buyer and I drove it around for a little bit, and, and that's how I got the GTR for free, right? No, I like that idea, but no, that's not it. I'll stop messing with you. Um, the way that I was able to buy a 2015 GTR, right, for zero dollars, uh, actually, um, after a year and a half of owning it, did not cost me one dollar. How? I'm a deal hunter. So let me explain to you exactly how I bought this car. Did I have a loan on the car? Did I not put any money down? Is that the way that I'm trying to rearrange this? Nope, not at all. So uh, the car itself, right? Um, I bought a little bit over a year and a half ago uh, from someone that I knew at the Arizona State University campus. Uh, this was a student that was graduating, needed to head back to their home country. And this is a little niche that I discovered for kind of like high-end vehicles uh, shortly after I moved here. Uh, and one of the things that I figured out is that once these students graduate, they need to get rid of their car. And a majority of the time, they end up wanting to get rid of the car within a very short notice, meaning that they need a cash buyer. Again, they're not coming back to the United States. So what does that leave us with? We're able to leverage the cash that we have to buy the car. I, at this point, didn't want the 2015 GTR. I already had a GTR at the time, at an Alpha 7. A lot of you guys might know that already know who it is that I am. I had a 2015 Alpha 7 blue carbon fiber hood, beautiful GTR. Why do I want another one? I didn't, only if it was a good deal. And this is exactly what you're able to leverage if and only if, not just being a cash buyer, but also able to qualify for this specific car within a very short notice. The really beautiful thing about Arizona is that they don't charge taxes on private party sales. And yes, you heard me right. So when it's a person to person sale for a vehicle, do you still have to register it? Of course. Do you have to pay taxes on it? No, only when you buy it through a dealership. So instead of buying a seventy dollars to $75,000 car through a dealership and having to pay taxes on top of that, you know, adding to my ownership expenses, all I had to do was put up the cash, buy the car if he accepted my deal. And again, what I'm able to leverage is that I'm able to buy the car cash and I don't want it. So my offer is a very laid back offer if that's what you wanna call it. Shot him an offer for 67,000. He was asking about $75,000 at the time and it took him a couple days to reason to that specific price, but as we got closer to the date that he needed to leave and he could not find someone to make him a reasonable enough offer within a very short period of time, is being a buyer that's able to leverage the capital that they have, which is exactly what that specific seller needs. So let me give you a little bit of a better example. For something that's a little bit more affordable, let's say that there's someone selling a car that's normally worth $3,000 for you know $2,500. And let's say that the reason that they're selling the car is because they're a distressed seller that maybe needs to pay some credit card debt off, right? So let's say that you have a relative uh, that really needs the money, uh, but you know, for yourself, you don't necessarily want the car unless it's a good deal, unless it actually makes sense for you. You can benefit them with the cash that you're able to leverage, right? Um, and then they can benefit you with giving you a good deal. I would only buy it for investment purposes uh, and of course still enjoy it along the way. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, once it ended up coming down uh, till the last day before he had to leave, I uh, ended up buying the car and I had the car for a year and a half. As you guys saw a couple days ago, just only a couple days ago, and a member within TechBud Solutions actually bought from Miami, bought my 2015 Stage 2 Silver GTR for $67,000. What about my insurance? What about you know my registration? That's something that I would incur with any of the cars that I have. I have a McLaren, I have a Porsche GT3 RS, I have a Lamborghini. Like that is not anything that would have affected me any different. The whole purpose of this video is to showcase the importance of being able to leverage 
your buying power, regardless if it's cash or regardless if it's a loan that you can qualify for. There's three things that I want you to focus on. Understand what that car is worth. With very simple research within your area, you're able to analyze what that car market and, and what that specific car alone is worth in your area. You can see the low points, you can see the high points, and you can determine you know, with the mileage, condition, and overall spec of that specific car and what it's worth. If you're struggling to identify that, then what can you do? A very little simple trick that we like to teach our Flipping Wheels members is call a local dealership, both big and small, and get a trade-in value for that specific car alone. Let them tell you what that car is worth to a dealership, a business that is established to buy and resell cars. Once they give you that bottom dollar, you know that you know their intention is to buy that car and to sell it for a profit. So you at least understand what that kind of support level of that specific car is. It's that simple. Once you determine what that car is worth, I like to focus on the negotiation aspect. Every single car that I've purchased since my first GTR, every single GTR that I've purchased has been a super laid back approach. And, and the way and the reason I do that is because there's no emotional attachment when it comes down to buying these cars. Just like when it comes down to you know trading in the stock market, just like when it comes down to buying the series of investment properties that I have in the past couple of years, I buy them because the investment makes sense. And if you don't view these cars as an investment, then you simply don't have to. You don't have to buy them. But the way that I buy them and the way that I resell them, I either break even or actually end up making a profit off of them. And that is exactly, that is exactly why I've been able to experience the success in this car market because there's no emotional attachment. It, it all comes down to the numbers and what that car is worth to me. I make my offer, I stick to it, and if they bite, then great. If they don't, then it wasn't meant to be. That simple. The last thing that I wanna talk about is this little niche that I've been able to find for these kind of like uh, higher end cars. And I'm in the Arizona area. So there's a lot of students that come from all over the United States and even some foreign students uh, that come from outside of the United States. A lot of these individuals are either paid by their country or paid by their parents uh, to buy these specific cars. And once they graduate or once they end up leaving the university, they need a buyer within a very short notice. I bring value to the sale because I'm able to put up my capital and able to purchase those cars at a price point that we can both agree on, but making sure that I do my part as a car investor to make sure that I get the best deal possible and that I leverage that I don't need the car, that I will only buy the car if the investment makes sense. And that is what has led to my success when it came down to one of the first cars that I did this with uh, was my 2012 GTR. My first GTR that I ever bought was actually in San Francisco, but I actually sold it to a foreign student here in the Arizona area. Shortly after that, I bought a 2015 Corvette Z06 from a student at the University of Arizona campus. Again, the same thing going from Arizona and he was moving to California and needed a cash buyer. Then, short, then shortly after that, I bought a 2012 MP4 12C, which was my first supercar that I've ever purchased. Again, from a foreign student from China that flew in, sold me the car here uh, near the ASU campus and ended up flying back just for the sale alone. So I have a lot of leverage with that experience. Now moving forward a couple of years, I have the McLaren 720S, I have the Lamborghini Huracan 610-4, I have a Porsche GT3 RS, and I recently just sold my 2015 Nissan GTR. So the whole purpose of this video is to make it super clear that you don't need to be doing anything special. You just need to educate yourself on what those cars are worth how you're able to leverage either the capital that you have or the capital that you're able to borrow to get the best deal possible. And the last thing is stick to the plan. Remove all emotions when it comes down to investing in this car market. I don't care how much you want the car. If the car is not sold to you at the price point where it makes sense as an investment, then it's not meant to be because at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you do your part as an investor to work towards those goals. And if you wanna to continue to scale from, from a Mustang to Camaro, a Camaro to a Corvette, a Corvette to a GTR, a GTR to an Audi R8, an Audi R8 to a McLaren MP4 12C, a McLaren MP4 12C to a 570S, 570S to a 720S. Does that sound familiar? 
because that's exactly what I did. It's all about scaling and making sure that you understand and as you continue to grow your experience, grow your confidence and grow your capital, you can use this very simple concept that you first began to use with your everyday drivers and you know, scale to a point where you're driving exotic cars but not actually losing any money and pretty much breaking even uh, or even making a profit off of them after you enjoy it. My 2015 Lamborghini Huracan 610-4 and my 2016 Porsche GT3 RS, I bought those each both for $180,000. The closest one in the Arizona area for the Lamborghini with the same spec, same mileage, and same condition is valued at over $200,000 right now on Craigslist. When it comes down to the Porsche GT3 RS, that's around $190,000. That's margin that I built for myself. I can enjoy these cars and then either break even or actually sell it for a profit if I find the right buyer. It's a beautiful thing when you educate yourself on how to actually take advantage of these opportunities. I really do appreciate your guys' time. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, I really hope that I earned your thumbs up. Um, if you guys have five minutes and want to learn a little bit more about this car market, click that first link down below. I would love to jump on a call with you and talk to you a little bit more about our Flipping Wheels 30 day challenge and how we can help you get started in finding the best car deals in your area. So again, I would love to talk to you and whenever you're ready, you can join our free Flipping Wheels Facebook group just by clicking that second link down below. I really do appreciate your guys' time. Like always, continue working hard, continue following dreams, let your passion be what drives your success. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.